mean, take, drinking a bottle of whiskey takes a little more time. <laughs> <laughs> so another question. Come on, can I ask? As you, as you know, there's some in the press sometimes called the Higgs boson the gold particle. What, what do you think of that? Well, I don't know. I mean, take, drinking a bottle of whiskey takes a little more time. <laughs> <laughs> so, another question. Come on, can I ask? Yeah. Um, you, as, you, as you know, there's some in the press sometimes called the Higgs boson the gold particle. What, what do you think of that? Well, that embarrasses me. I mean, the, the, the term gold particle uh, was introduced by, by Leon Lederman. Uh, in, his, in his book, and uh, uh, <clears throat> Lederman claims that he, he, he didn't really intend that to be the title. He wanted to, to refer to it as that Godin particle, and, and, and his, his editor wouldn't let him, so he just abbreviated it to the God particle. But, uh, but I, I find it embarrassing because, uh, uh, although I'm, uh, I'm not uh, a believer myself, I, it, it's a sort of misuse of terminology, which I think might offend some people. In uh, uh, Biedermann's book, he compares the Higgs mechanism to the Tower of Babel, which is to say that uh, in the early stages, there was this beautiful incandescent symmetry. Uh, and then as things cooled, the Higgs mechanism came in and made a mess of things. Um, and I think that's why he calls it the goddamn particle, because he feels it's what yeah. Well, uh, it's a curious point of view, I think, because, uh, I mean, the, the um, I mean, in the early universe, the, um, uh, going, going through the phase, phase transition in which the, the, the symmetry, symmetry breaks, and which the, in which the Higgs mechanism then operates, is, is, is actually producing, uh, 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 in, a, in a sense, a more ordered structure in which makes uh, so many things possible. We wouldn't be, we wouldn't be here without it because it's you know, separating out electromagnetic long-range forces from... from You've actually been to see how you felt around the various places where you've been uh, at CERN. And also, uh, how, long, have you, how long is it since you've actually visited CERN and uh, what's your impression of how it has changed, obviously partly as a result of um, experiments in order to, to back up your theories? Well, uh, I'll answer the, the second sure. part for, first. The, the last time I was at CERN, it was, it was a very brief uh, uh, visit to see a colleague's ex experiment uh, in the north area at Privet, uh, that was 1985, and it was, uh, I was only here for, uh, 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 at CERN for, for, for an hour or two, so I really hadn't, didn't form much impression of, of how the site had developed then. Um, the previous occasion was, was at a conference in 1979, where I, I did see more, uh, but at that stage the exciting thing was the, the hole in the ground in which the anti-proton accumulator was to be built to get Carlo Rubia his Nobel Prize. Uh, but my main uh, visit to, to, to CERN in terms of time was as long ago as 1976, and certainly uh, over the years, the, the growth of the, uh, well, the, the, the area covered and the density of the buildings has been you know, tremendous. I, I, I find it difficult to uh, find my way around. There are only one or two places that I still recognize, like the cafeteria and so on. <laughs> um, from a science perspective as well. Uh, from a science perspective, how do you uh, no, no, know what's that changed since, since you last visited? Um, well, of course, my last, even even my last brief visit, being before uh, before LEP started, uh, was uh, I mean, I mean, the program since then has been for for me, um, you know, much more exciting than many things that went on before, and uh, I've followed, certainly followed 
the way that LEP uh, did precision measurements in, in on a standard model. Uh, I, I followed that very, very avidly. And uh, obviously, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to uh, what LHC will do. About the visit itself, well, we, we uh, had a strenuous first afternoon with, with uh, CMS followed by Atlas. Uh, my, I mean, my impressions were, first of all, uh, that uh, you know, the, 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 the scale, sheer scale of the detectors was overwhelming. It was, you know, far, far more impressive than you get out of any photograph. Uh, I was also um, very, uh, very, very in, impressed by the, the, the number of, of very tricky technical problems which people had had to solve to get these things together at all, and the, the way in which um, they, they managed to organise the uh, manufacture of. of components from, from other countries all, all over the world and, and get them to fit together. I think that's sort of perfect. The, the, the building of it is really an impressive achievement. Uh, after, after that we, we saw um, uh, Alice on uh, Saturday and we still have to see LHCB before we leave this afternoon. Uh, uh, comparing the various detectors which we saw the, and the, the organizations, uh, uh, the, the, the obvious thing to me was that um, Atlas was way ahead of the others in terms of public relations. <laughs> C, C, CMS were also uh, extremely imp impressive in terms of our interaction with them, but they, 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 they didn't seem to be uh, sort of re reaching out so much in terms of, of, of publicity as, as the Atlas team does.